In this video, we're going to be discussing different thermodynamic processes, and they're all related to, you know, work and energy. That's why I put this one here down when you really want to play hard without working hard. It's from the office. <laughs> okay, let's actually remind ourselves. These are the different skills and different pieces we're going to need to know. So first of all, remember the first law of thermodynamics. It relates the energy transfer, uh, and it's relating to the change in internal energy and the work done. Now, of course, if we want to zoom in on the work done, then we get this one here, right? The work done is equal to P delta V. And remember, that's the area under a PV diagram, which means that if it goes that way, then we know that the work is positive, for example. And if it goes to the left, like this, well, then we know that the work done by the system, at least, is negative. And don't forget, we got PV equals NRT, the ideal gas equation. And we have this here for change in internal energy. This is this piece right here. And just remember that if the temperature goes up, then the internal energy also goes up. Because now we're going to look at four different processes that are important, okay? So we're going to do them one at a time. So one is called isovolumetric. Some people call it isochoric, but it's where we have a constant volume. And I think the nice way to start with this is just to always start with PV equals NRT, just to try to see what happens here. So first of all, if we have PV equals NRT, if the volume is constant, by the way, these are here are constants, so we're going to ignore those. If the volume is constant, we ignore it. Do you notice that P is proportional to T? So I'm going to state that. So that means P is proportional to T. All right, what does that mean? Well, that means that if I have a graph of P versus T, it's going to be a straight line graph going up like this. So that means that as uh, T, for example, goes up, then I know that the pressure goes up. And vice versa, of course, if, P goes, uh, if T goes down, pressure goes down. So I think that's a key piece to know. Let's then look at an example. So playing around with all these three different quantities here of uh, change in internal energy, the work done, and Q, let's look at this particular example here. Here's an isovolumetric process, goes from here to here. And what I like to do then is just slowly, slowly figure out each step here. So what's delta U? It's not obvious what the temperature should do, right? Because remember, delta U, remember this, delta U contains a temperature term. Remember that, okay? So if you know something about the temperature, then you know something about what delta U does. So let's look at this one. If this one right here, do we know anything about the temperature? Well, not quite, but I do know that the pressure went down. If the pressure went down, because these two right here are uh, proportional, what does that tell me? That means the temperature went down. So if the temperature went down, that means it's negative. So do you see that? why that is? That's because as P goes down, that means that T goes down. And remember, delta U contains a temperature term. So if a temperature goes down, then this is negative. Does that make sense? That's the, it's not always obvious. How about the work done by the system? Well, uh, the uh, work done is the area under the curve, but this is dimensionless here, so there's no, the area is gonna be zero. And remember that, because uh, what's Q? Remember, Q is always just this plus this. So that means that a negative plus zero, let's just put it like this, so negative plus zero, what does that give me? That gives me a negative. Therefore, I have that the uh, Q here, for example, is gonna be negative. I think this is like the, the key little pieces to actually kind of um, figure out. I think this is, this is really important to be able to do. Okay, so that's because the area, area equals zero, that's the reason for that one. And what's the reason for this one here? That's because, well, Q equals delta U, plus W, so we're just adding them up. Let's do the next one. The next one's called isobaric, or constant pressure. So same idea we're gonna start off with. We're just gonna treat this the same each time. So PV equals NRT. And what are we gonna ignore this time? We're going to ignore, so before we were ignoring um, the volume. The volume was constant. This time the pressure is constant. So I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna ignore those guys. So do you notice then I have that the volume is proportional to the temperature. That's the key part here. So what does that mean here? Well, that means that this here goes like this. That means as temperature goes up, that means the volume goes up. That's another piece. So see, just like here, for example, we were looking at this. Now we have this. As the temperature goes up, the volume goes up. Okay, let's see if we can figure this out. So uh, delta U, remember delta U tells you something about the, um, well, in this case here, delta U contains temperature. If the volume went up, 
Okay, so the volume actually increases in this particular case. If the volume increases, what does that mean? That means temperature increases. That means this is a plus. So again, just to explain it clearly, that's because um, as volume goes up, temperature goes up. And remember, temperature going up means this. So that's the reason. How about the work done? Well, we decided that the work done, if it goes to the right, it's positive. So that's this. So I'll just say it's area and it's equal to the left, uh, sorry, to the right, right? Because it's areas to the right. Well, I shouldn't say like this. I should say the work done is the area. I should say that actually. So work done is the area under this graph and it's to the right. All right, so that means it's positive. All right, how about Q? Well, remember that Q is always just going to be Q equals delta U plus W. I'm reminding you a lot just so you remember this, okay? Just so I'm being annoying. Well, then it's delta U plus delta W. So that means it's got to be a positive plus a positive. So what can we say then? We can say that Q then is equal, Q is a positive. So just like before here, we had this one. Now we have, oh, this time, so the uh, this here's the energy transfer right here. It's positive. Okay. Let's keep going then. We got another one called isothermal. That's when the temperature is the same. But I like this one here. <laughs> How do you keep so cool when you're under the pre when you're under pressure? Isothermal contraction. And look what happens. Of course, if you keep the temperature the same, if the uh, volume it will go down as the pressure goes up. So that's sort of the idea. Is, uh, uh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Let's see if all this right here will make sense. Uh, so we've got PV equals N R. T, just like before. This time, what are we ignoring? We're ignoring temperature. Temperature is the same. This here is like this, so watch carefully. Then if I want to get P by itself, i got to do 1 over V. That means the pressure is proportional to 1 over the volume. And what does that look like? This is a reciprocal graph. And what does that look like? That means the graphs go like this. It looks like Y equals 1 over X. So that means you can say then as, say something like this, for example, or it might actually go the other way. It might go left. But what we can say then for sure is that, um, well, as pressure goes, uh, let's say, down, then the volume goes up. We could say that, right? As the pressure goes down, the volume goes up. And let's look at this particular example then. So if you have this one right here, well, let's work on this one right here. Remember what delta U is? Well, this one's actually going to be pretty easy because the temperature is constant. So that means if the temperature doesn't change, that means delta U then just remains zero. Okay, so again, remember, that's because T is constant. And if T doesn't change, that means the internal energy doesn't change. All right, what about W? In this particular case, do you notice it goes to the left? So I'm going to say this. So, you know, remember, W equals the area, and this time it goes to the left. So because of that, what do we say about the work done by the system? It's going to be negative. And what do we say here then? Well, we say zero plus negative. What does that give me? I can say, therefore, Q equals a negative. Uh, whoops, I'll go like this, just like I did before, just so it's consistent here. So Q is a negative. Why was that again? Well, that's, remember, Q. If it seems like I'm being annoying with this right here, writing it down all the time, it's because I'm doing this on purpose, so you see what I'm doing. So it's really, really easy and obvious. All right, last one. Now you think, well, we had three different variables. We've kept each of them constant, either P or V or T. So we're done, right? There's one more. There's something called adiabatic. And this one is a little bit sneaky, okay? The key thing here is this. For adiabatic, Q equals zero. This is the key thing for adiabatic here. So that's the key here. Adiabatic means Q is zero. So what does that mean? That means it's going to look like an isothermal, except it's going to be steeper. So I don't know, maybe something like something like that, maybe. Or maybe like, you know, maybe going up. It doesn't matter. Something like this right here. And this time, what's interesting is we're going to start here. Okay, so this time right here, we, we're going to have to figure this. And then you go up, and then you go up. So we start off with Q equals zero. We know this because it is adiabatic. So because it's adiabatic, we know this for sure. Now let's look at the work done. In this particular one right here, the work done is positive. Why is that again? Remember, that's because work equals the area and because it went to the right.
What about the change in internal energy? It isn't obvious, is it? But one thing I can tell for sure, though, is this. Because, so and I'm going to use this law right here, that because Q equals delta U plus W, I know that zero has to equal something plus a negative. Therefore, does it make sense that this has to be negative? I don't know if that made sense to you, but that's just because I had to have a, well, I had to have zero equals something, so I had to do a negative plus a positive. That's the only way that I could do this was by having a negative here. Because if I did a positive plus a positive, I'd have a positive, and I needed to get zero. So here we're kind of working backwards. So that's why I don't think it was super obvious, but that's why, yeah, it's good to show you these examples, I think. Now finally, we have the adiabatic pressure relation. So if we do have an ideal gas and it's monatomic, then we can say this. We can say that the pressure times the volume to the power of 5 thirds is going to be constant. This is again something from your data booklet, so you don't have to memorize it. But there we go. We have PV to the 5 thirds is constant. And remember, don't forget, uh, pressure is in pascals, volume is in meters cubed. So what does this really mean? Let's actually try to look at this. That means that if I know a certain state, let's say like P at A, well, I know that the pressure at A times the volume at A to the power of 5 thirds is going to be the same thing as pressure at B times the volume at B to the 5 thirds. So in other words, if I know both the pressure and the volume at one point, then I can use that to find the pressure and the volume at a different point. So long as I know one of them, I can figure out the other. So let's say I wanted VB and I had everything else, I can do it. Or if I wanted PB and I had everything else, I can do it. So this, I think, is a really important sort of pro tip right here. This is really useful for solving 